Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my top 10 solo board games to start your collection. And I thank you for joining me tonight for my top 10 list of solo board games to start your collection. Now, some of you may be wondering what I'm still doing with hair. I have said that I will shave my head here pretty soon. Uh, it's just getting too hot and my hair is getting too long. It's all curly in the back and stuff. But I'm having a hard time letting it go. So I may just keep it around just a little while longer. But don't be surprised when I go from this to completely bald here in a short while. Now I've put together a list and this list is actually 30 games. It, it'll be three games in 10 different categories. And this is not a tiered list as in 10 is the worst and one is the best. This is a list to help you to start your solo board game collection if you haven't already. And if you have, maybe this will give you a good idea of some games to look out for. Now I grouped all these games with uh, various groups. Uh, some of it's for mechanics, some of it's for opportunity, and uh, it, it'll make sense as I give you my list here. And one other thing I wanna say about this list is I tried to tailor it to be more budget friendly. So I do have some games on the list that are uh, in the above $50 range, but most of these games you can find for less than $50. So I, I tried to tailor it that way, especially the 10 games, one in each category that I'm gonna highlight specifically, those should be available for $50 or less, a lot of them a lot less. So I tried to tailor it that way for you. Now I do have one honorable mention, and I want to mention the Guild of Merchant Explorers. Sorry, covered up Pop Thulu there. <laughs> so the Guild of Merchant Explorers didn't really fit in one of the categories. I think this is a really good game to start your collection. And so I would highly recommend you seek a copy of this out. It often goes on sale on AEG's website, or you can find it for a pretty good price with your online retailers. This is a great, relaxing, fun solo experience. It's easy to play it's quick to play there's a lot to do there's different maps there's all sorts of things and a lot of replayability I, I i don't know i don't think i've heard anybody really say much bad about it other than maybe the colors or the way it looks but the gameplay is fantastic and i highly recommend it and so for our number 10 category this is called dice based games now this can encompass all sorts of games that use dice this is where the dice are like the, the primary uh, mechanism in the game, whether you're rolling the dice or placing the dice or doing something with the dice. Everything revolves around the dice. And so there's a couple games I recommend. One is Siege of Valeria. Now, bear in mind, as a disclaimer, I received a review copy of that, but I find it a fascinating game. The dice placement's really good. It's a tower defense kind of game. And the next one is Elder Sign, my absolute number one favorite dice game. I love Elder Sign. It's so challenging, so fun. Uh, although some people find it aggravating how fast you can lose. But I don't know. I, I love the challenge. I have all the expansions. I have the really hard expansions, like, like the, the Pharaoh one, the one in Egypt. That one's like near impossible to win, but I love playing it every time. So I, I recommend Elder Sign. But the one I want to highlight tonight night is role player. I haven't really talked about role player much, but this remains one of my most played games in my collection. Not as much as Elder Sign, but I've played this dozens of times and I can't recommend it enough. If you like the idea of rolling dice, placing dice, manipulating dice, you can move them around on a grid, flip them over, re-roll them, that sort of thing. And then uh, doing this game where you're creating a character, you're creating a D&D &D character. That's what it kind of, you know, harkens back to is is D&D &D character creation. Now, you, you need to know that you don't do anything with the character. A lot of people think that uh, um, the game should include that. And it does. And in an expansion, you're able to fight off monsters and minions. But, oh, that's the name of the expansion. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, I highly recommend the game at, at its core game. I, I play this more than with Monsters and Minions. I have that expansion, I just don't play it that often. I've probably played that expansion 10 times and this closer to 40 times on the base game. So this is a, a great game. I can't recommend it enough. It, I love it and I play it all the time and I definitely should uh, make a tutorial solo playthrough of it 
so one of these days my list of playthroughs to make are so long but yeah I, I will definitely look into that but i highly recommend it role player one of the best dice based games i've played all right, so the next group of games is what I call lunch break games. It's games that you can break out at lunchtime and play and, and complete a game, maybe even two during lunch. These games are pocket size. You're able to take them wherever you want to go. They're, they don't take up much room on the table. They're fairly easy to learn. Some of them hard to master and all provide a solid solo experience. Now, one of the games I'm going to mention is Spaceship by Button Shy. If you know Button Shy games, they're wallet sized games. They literally fit in a wallet and they're 18 card games. And they're really inexpensive, like $12 to $15. But Spaceship is a challenging one and fun experience. I, I love Spaceship. I don't own a lot of Button Shy games, but that is one of my favorites for sure. But you could also throw in Sprawlopolis and other games. There's plenty of games to choose from. Rove is a highly popular one in the solo crowd. So I recommend that one as well. But the one I want to feature here tonight is one that came out recently. And it's from Jason Glover. He's known for his Game Crafter Mint 10... Or <laughs> 10 mint, mint 10 games. <laughs> and he recently came out with one called... Dust Runner. <laughs> so Dust Runner is like a Mad Max kind of game where you're traveling across the wasteland trying to avoid raiders and trying to get enough fuel and ammo for your car and make it to the end. And so Dust Runner is a great game. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes to play, maybe 20 minutes. It's very easy to learn, but it's challenging and there's just a lot going for it. It's, it's a fun thematic experience and the colors are great. I, I like the color scheme, the, the pink on black really works. But you can lump in some of the other Mint 10 games such as Gates and Tin Helm that Jason Glover has offered. And I don't know if you've seen his Facebook, but he's got another one coming up. I think it's a Mint 10 game. It might not be, but it's called Underquest. I, I believe that's what it's called. The art looks fantastic on it, so keep an eye out for that one. All right, for number eight, the next group of games is a type of game that's been exploding in the board gaming community. It's called Roll and Write, and it also includes games that are flip and write, where you flip a card and write something on a, a paper. So there's a lot of games out there now, and there's more and more. <laughs> I think there's at least like two or three released every Tuesday on Kickstarter. I, I swear, it's like so many Roll and Write games. It's, it's a huge amount of the hobby right now. A lot of them are solo play. And so one of my favorites is Rolling Realms by Stonemaier Games. And I absolutely love that game. And I own just about everything for it. And Rolling Realms 2 is coming out next year. So looking forward to that. But there's also the Welcome To series, Welcome To Your Perfect Home or Welcome To The Moon. I played the, the first one, but not the second one. But I've heard a lot of good things about Welcome To The Moon. But the one I want to feature tonight is Super Mega Lucky Box. <laughs> this is by Game Right Games, and you can get this for $15 or less. I, I think I paid $12 for mine. And this is kind of like a bingo style game where you, or a, a tic-tac-toe kind of game where you're trying to get uh, multiple numbers in a row, and you are able to scraw, uh, cover up extra boxes when you complete rows or do different bonuses as these nice little chain reactions. It's a fun game. It plays maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It's very easy to get into. The quality is great. For the, the $12 that you get, it, the card quality, the component quality, everything's great about this game. I, I highly recommend it, especially if you're starting on the hobby and want to try out a roll and write game. This is a great one to start at to see if you like that genre of games. And I, I can't recommend it enough. Again, it's super cheap, but you get so many plays out of it. I, I've played this probably a dozen times and I don't see myself stopping. <laughs> I, I like that game. I break it out every now and then just for a quick 10 to 15 minute play. All right, for my number seven category, what solo gaming collection is without a dungeon crawler? <laughs> now, if you've been in the hobby, whether multiplayer board gaming or solo gaming, you no doubt have experienced a, a dungeon crawler at some point, or maybe you played D&D. But dungeon crawlers are a huge part of the hobby. They provide a fantastic narrative experience, an adventure experience, tactical gameplay, story, all sorts of things. Now, one of my absolute favorite dungeon crawlers is Bloodborne the board game. The only thing about that game is 
Is it expensive? You're looking to spending at least $70 to $90. So I'm not recommending it here. I just want to mention it. It's right here. <laughs> I have it always featured there. I love Bloodborne. It's a fantastic game. Now, the other two that I'm going to mention are more on the budget-friendly side. I haven't played one of them, but I'm going to recommend it anyways. If you like Marvel superheroes, then check out Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance. You can pick that up in stores right now. It is very inexpensive. I've heard it go as low as $25, maybe $30. It has fantastic miniatures for the superheroes. And it provides the, the small version of a zombicide experience, which is your heroes going up against a horde of enemies and trying to navigate this uh, tiled setup of a city and work your way through trying to gain supplies and fighting off the enemies and all sorts of things. So I definitely recommend checking that out, especially if you're a fan of Marvel. But the one I want to feature tonight is no stranger to a lot of board gamers, and that is Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Now, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is a small version of Gloomhaven. I've seen this as low as $20. This is a like a literally a five or six pound box, and it comes with tons of uh, content. I think there's 25 missions. It has intro scenarios. The first five scenarios are an intro to the game and they, they gradually show you how to play the game and give you different things to enhance your experience. This is a great entry to dungeon crawlers all around. And here's the thing. I don't even like Gloomhaven Solo. <laughs> I, I really don't. But I know so many people do. And I, I recognize it is a good game. I just don't enjoy it solo. But many people do, and so I highly recommend you seek this out because it is so inexpensive. You can pick it up for cheap. On top of that, it's not like it's Big Brother where you destroy components in a legacy styles format. This one here, you can replay it. And so if you buy it off of somebody for relatively cheap, you can reuse it. There's just a lot available here for $20, $25. You can find it on sale brand new or even less used. And there's so much content, it'll give you hours and hours of experience. Even if you end up disliking it for like I did, you will find value in this. It'll, it'll enhance your understanding of what you like about solo board gaming and what kind of games you like. What Gloomhaven showed me is what kind of dungeon crawlers I don't like and what kind I do. And so it helps me enjoy the hobby all the more having experienced this. All right, the next category is what I call adventure card games. And this can encompass all sorts of games, but I want to feature just three here. And one of them is Arkham Horror, the card game. Now, the base game of that is about $40, I believe. But honestly, you're going to end up spending more money. So if you go down the Arkham Horror road, the base game content is not enough because it just whets your appetite and you're going to want to grab everything else but i don't recommend that unless you want to unless you're able to spend the money to support your ongoing enjoyment of that game the other one i want to recommend is gloom of killforth now i recently got this at my local game store it was recommended to me on a facebook poll i had put a poll up and everybody voted i should get gloom of killforth and they weren't wrong it's a fantastic game i can't wait to show you in a tutorial solo playthrough I love this game and I was surprised why I hadn't got it before and now I want the rest of the Kill Force series, but it's a little bit on the expensive side. Again, this game is above $50. So the next one I want to talk about and the one I want to highlight tonight is my number two favorite solo game of all time and that is Warfighter. <laughs> now Warfighter, I love this game so much. <laughs> Sorry, we will have... Uh... We will have Pop Thulu hold everything up here. There you go. <laughs> Anyways, I love Warfighter so much. I even have a tattoo of Warfighter on my arm. I, I love this game. This game has been so important to me in the hobby. It, it was one of the games that brought me through some of the darkest times in my mental health. And so I absolutely love this game and I can't recommend it enough. Now what I'm featuring here is the modern edition. This is Warfighter Modern, the fourth edition. And what this reminds me of is if you've played Call of Duty or any of those 
army video games, that's what this reminds me of. It's modern combat. It feels like you're a super soldier sometimes, the way you outfit your, your soldiers and you can just go in and finish the mission, get to the extraction, do all sorts of things. It's such a great game. Now, my, my favorite edition is the World War II edition, but I'm recommending this one is because I think this one is uh, a better entry into the Warfighter universe. I think it's easier to grasp. I think it's got more of the fun factor. I, I'm not saying I don't enjoy uh, World War II more. I really do. But I think this one's got more of the fun factor for it. And I think it's got a wider reach I can't recommend this enough. You can get it for about $40, $45 if it's on sale. It's such a great game. And he, okay, you're going to ask, how many expansions do you need? Because there are dozens of expansions for this game. All right. I'm going to tell you zero. Okay. The core game will give you a hundred hours of content, a hundred at minimum. The core game, that's it. So, don't even worry about buying expansions. Don't even think about it. Just try out this game and see if you enjoy that. And, and work your way through all the different kinds of missions. Work your way through the campaigns. Yes, there's campaigns in this game. Then decide at the very end if you want to expand it. And then you can go down that road. But you don't feel the need to spend it right away. All right, so we're halfway through. This is one of my longer list videos because I'm really talking about 30 games here. I apologize. I try to make these videos short, but I want to talk about so many games. There's so many great games to experience in this hobby and especially in the solo board gaming community. And I want to for showcase so many of them. My, my table will only hold so many of them. Now, the next category I'm going to call resource management games. Resource management games are games where you are gaining or producing resources, maybe buying resources, trading resources, trying to use your resources to the maximum ability so you can score the highest in the game or beat out the AI. Now, two of the recommendations come from the same designer, and that's Uwe Rosenberg. He does some fantastic resource management games. They are so good. I love his games, and I'm trying to collect all of them. Like, I really am. One I want to recommend is Noosefjord. Now, Newsfjord is such a great game. It's a worker placement game where you place your worker, do an action, but those workers you place in one round will block you in the next one, so you can't repeat those actions. And you're trying to build out your fishing village, you're trying to fish for fish, and log the forests, and all sorts of things, and build out these buildings to score a lot of these points. It's such a great game. I can't recommend it enough. And the best thing about it is Newsfjord is coming out with a big box edition and includes all the expansions and the, the previous expansions that are out of print and new expansions. I can't wait for the new expansions. I'm going to be picking those up. No problem. And the other game by Uwe Rosenberg is Glass Road. And I recently did a tutorial solo playthrough of Glass Road. And it's a very tight resource game. And it has this really interesting uh, resource management wheel where when you gain certain resources, the wheel automatically turns and it gains you other resources on the other side. It's really interesting. It's really uh, fun. And I really like that game. It's a very good entry level game. And uh, it's still in print, and I, I found mine for 40 bucks. I bet you can find yours for cheaper, maybe used. But the one I want to feature here too tonight is a one that's going to barely fit on the table, but that is The Pursuit of Happiness. So The Pursuit of Happiness is a, a game about living the best life. You start as a teenager, getting odd jobs, and then uh, you know working your way, and you can gain other jobs that let you become different, you know, these different tier jobs. You can even become president of the United States. But you're also doing all sorts of activities. You're going on adventures. You're doing, you can even collect board games. <laughs> you can do all sorts of things. You can exercise. Uh, you can also date and marry and have kids and all sorts of things. Now, this is the big box edition. This was recently delivered to me. I had the original edition. I got the big box upgrade here. And I'm not saying go seek out the big box. I'm saying go find the base game. It should be available now since it fulfilled this Kickstarter. I would imagine the base game is more readily available. And I would highly recommend it. It's probably about 50 bucks. I'm sorry I didn't look it up. But this game is so good. It's so much fun. It's very thematic. 
You have goals that you have to reach in order to win the game. It's, it's such a great game. I can't recommend it enough. Okay, the next group of games is called Tile Laying Games. And I have quite a few to recommend. You know, one of them is going to be Planet Unknown. I think that's a good entry level, but you know what? I have, to, I have to tell you, the cost is too much. It really is. I mean, I looked at the new Kickstarter and I think the normal one is like $100 or so, something like that. That might be the deluxe edition, but $100? I don't know. I don't know about that. But... It is a good game. It's a good entry level game. I'm actually thinking of selling mine though because I've played it about 40 times and I've seen everything there is for it. And I've got other games that do that better. And one of those games is Wild Tiled West that just recently came out. It's made by the designer of Dune Imperium. And I, I just did a tutorial solo playthrough of it. And I love that game. It's fantastic. And one of the solo gamers in the Facebook communities mentioned the fact that there's actually a campaign for it on the uh, Dire Wolf app. So I have to check that out because I want to do that campaign. The, the game makes tile lane so much more interesting. But the one I'm going to recommend because it's readily available, it's less expensive, and it's very easy as an entry level one, but it's also challenging later on as you get better at the game. And that's gonna be Cascadia. Cascadia is a hex tile game where you're laying out these little hexes on the board and you're gathering animals and placing them on the board and you're trying to create specific patterns or place animals near each other or away from each other and all sorts of things. Each game comes with different goals. So each game is different. And inside the actual rule book is a whole bunch of scenarios that you can try and they all have different uh, scoring goals and different setups for the game. But yeah, if you wanna learn about tile laying games and how they work and, and what they're like, this is a great game to start with. All right, for number three, the next section is what I call boss battler games. It's where you are facing against a boss monster. Sometimes you have to go through minions, but you're facing against this giant boss that you have to defeat. Now, one I've always mentioned is Bullet Heart. That is the best solo game I've ever played. It is not my number one game, but it is a perfect solo experience. I, I rated 10 out of 10. I love that game, but it's not always available and it may be a little bit more expensive depending on where you live and how much shipping is and all that. Another game I want to mention is Marvel United, which I've mentioned before. It's a fantastic game. You can get it cheap. The starting edition of it, usually with the Spider-Verse expansion to it and like 25 bucks I've seen it on Amazon. It's a great game. I, I highly recommend it, especially if you like miniature painting or like the idea of doing that. It's great entry level for that. But the game I want to mention is one I've actually sold. <laughs> so the game I want to mention is called Aeon's End. Aeon's End is what is called a deck builder game. It's where you start out with a basic deck and you work your way in building your deck with more powerful cards. But in Aeon's End, you are facing off against this giant godlike creature that's attacking the town and you're trying to protect the town. And so you're trying to open these rifts to cast these magic spells to defeat minions and defeat the boss. Now, the reason why I sold it is I just did not enjoy it as a solo game. But I highly recommend it because it is huge among, among the solo gaming community. I recognize it's a good game. I have no problem with the game itself. I just don't enjoy it. And that's not the game's fault. That's my fault. All right. The, the game is designed well. There's a lot of content for it. But don't feel like you need to buy all the expansions. Get one of the base games. I think War Eternal is a good spot to start. There's also Astronauts, which is a sci-fi version of the same kind of game, and it may be more accessible on the entry level. And actually, I backed the Astronauts uh, Kickstarter last time because I want to give that one a shot because I think that one will be better for me because of the gameplay changes that they made. But I recommend either of them. And again, I don't have a box here for you because I sold the game, but that doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, it's a good game, and I know so many in the solo gaming community love it. All right, so the next type of game that I want to talk about is what we call engine building games. 
Engine building games is where you start with a small engine. And this engine, when it runs, it, it produces a little bit of resources or does a few different things. But as you build onto the engine, it becomes this snowball effect of resources, abilities, powers, all sorts of things. And this can also be tableau builder games where you're building out cards or tiles on a tableau and they trigger off of each other. Now, one of the games I want to mention, there's actually two games that are very similar. One of them is called 51st State, and it's a post-apocalyptic game where you're building out your fort and you're trying to compete against an AI that's also building out their fort and trying to raid your fort for resources. This, it's a tableau and an engine building game where your tableau gives you different abilities and then you build this engine of resources that you gain at the end of every round and it just snowballs and you have all sorts of resources to do all sorts of actions. The same thing goes with Empires of the North by the same company and that is more of a tableau builder but it, it has a bunch of scenarios in the game that provide you a different experience every time you play and there's so many different uh, factions that you can play and I, I love that game too. But one of my all-time favorite engine builders is Terraforming Mars. Not Ares Expedition, but Terraforming Mars, the base game. Now, everybody's going to tell you to buy Prelude with it. I'm going to say, I love the base game. And you can say I'm crazy if I play just the base game. I have played just the base game. I think 87 was the last count I had, and I've played since then. So over 87 times, all right, 87 times of the base game without Prelude. I own Prelude. I own Venus. I don't play with those. I just play with the base game because I love the game so much. I love how it's, the engine starts small and then it ramps up. And then it's this time crunch to try and terraform the planet in, in enough time. But enough about that, I'm going to talk about a game that's more accessible as an engine builder and more inexpensive because you can find it on sale for about 30 bucks or less. And that is It's a Wonderful World. Now, It's a Wonderful World is fantastic. It's an entry level of an engine builder and it provides a very streamlined experience. Now, you can also lump in It's a Wonderful Kingdom here because the solo experience in It's a Wonderful Kingdom is probably better. Although, I, I have to say, with the expansions of It's a Wonderful World, they are on par with each other. But It's a Wonderful Kingdom is really, really good. It didn't take off like this one did. But I recommend them both, and you can get them relatively inexpensive. But they provide a fast, streamlined experience. I have a tutorial solo playthrough of the base game, as well as one of the campaign expansions. And so, if you want to check it out, that, that'd be a way. Again, you can get this for about 30 bucks. It plays in about 20 to 30 minutes and provides this fantastic engine building experience where you start up producing uh, like four resources and then by the end you're producing 30, 40, maybe 50 resources. All right, so we're at our number one final group of games and this is what I call crisis management games or maybe you've heard of firefighting co-op games something like that it's basically games where there is a crisis on the board and you try to solve it and sometimes the crisis goes out of control and you gotta push back at it pandemic comes to mind Marvel United is one of those. Even Bullet and Cthulhu Death May Die and all sorts of other games are part of this. But the one that eclipses them all and my number one solo game of all time is Spirit Island. Now I am showing you the Horizons of Spirit Island cover here because the Horizons of Spirit Island is an inexpensive entry level into what Spirit Island is. And I was actually surprised by this. See, I never wanted to buy this because I didn't need an entry level and it provides some extra spirits for me to play but I have so much content with what I have so far I didn't even back nature incarnate I may pick that up later but I have so much content already and I have played it it's probably my most played game in the collection I, I I'm trying to think if I have any other game that's more played than that one maybe Turing Machine but Spirit Island is so good it's such a thematic, fun experience. The problem with it is it often is seen as a high barrier to entry, except Horizon solves that. 
The way Horizon solves that is it's kind of hard to explain, but they make the power cards much more easy to use for these particular spirits and give those particular spirits some extra powerful powers. And so basically it's an easier level of difficulty, which is no problem. I have no problem with that because this game has always been about customizable difficulty and experience because the game... The base game of Spirit Island provides you with all sorts of ways to customize your experience and make it easier or harder. And so I love the fact that they offered this. I picked this up for $15. $15. And the only reason why I picked it up is because you guys asked me to make a tutorial solo playthrough video for it, which I did last week. And so if you want to check it out, check it out there. I played uh, with the rising heat of stone and sand, I think is what it's called. And that was so much fun. I actually really enjoyed it. So definitely check out this game. There's so much to this game for $15 to $30. What you can pay for this game right now will provide you with a lot of experience and it will tell you whether or not you like Spirit Island. And if you do, you will by all means want to seek out the rest of it. And there's so much content. I recommend after this one, you get the base game Spirit Island and then Branching Claw and then play those to death before you add any more. But it's such a great game. I can't say enough about it. It's not even a 10 out of 10 game. <laughs> There's some things about it that bring it down slightly, but it's still my number one game of all time because it is the, the most comprehensive solo experience in my collection with all its variability, replayability, customizable difficulty, everything it offers. I love this game. I think this edition is a fantastic entry into your solo gaming. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I've probably said too much already. And so there you have it. And so those are the top 10 solo board games to start your collection. Of course, I talked about much more than that. I talked about 30 or more games. And I hope this gives you some ideas of different games you can add to your collection to help introduce you to various uh, me mechanisms and opportunities like the lunch break games. It it'll tell you more about what you enjoy when you try out some of these more budget friendly games. Because if you know what you enjoy, then you can seek out those games and better tailor your solo gaming experience to you and what you enjoy. So definitely leave me some comments below and let me know what you think uh, of solo games that people should start out the collection with and let me know what you thought of my list. Also, I want to thank you for continually supporting my channel. I am coming up on 2,000 subscribers. I'm uh, just 120 shy of it right now. I can't believe it. It's amazing. And also, I'm almost at my 200th video. Can you believe that? 200th video? It's coming up quick. And so... Uh, I, I love that you supported me. I love that my, my playthroughs have helped you. Please always let me know if my playthroughs have helped you. It encourages me because I, I often don't know. I, I guess send out a playthrough and I don't know if it's helping people or not. But if it does, let me know. To, uh, put a like on there. It really does help, uh, you know, encourage me to keep going this way. And so I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.